Welcome back, everybody. Uh, I got another uh, Zebra Solutions for you. Uh, I had a question asked the other day. Um, someone was uh, trying to figure out why, you know, th they're on YouTube and they see all these people in Zebra to have multiple sub tools and, you know, they could have like, you know, 50, 100 of them. I, I've been known to have quite a few too. Um, and is that helpful in baking the maps and all that? And I said, well, yes, uh, it just depends on how you go about it. Um, you can uh, export all those uh, files out to an external baker, like in Substance Painter or Designer. You know, a lot of the big 3D applications have uh, some sort of baking involved. Um, and then she asked if, well, I mean, can I do it in ZBrush? And I said, well, yes, you can. You can actually bake everything inside ZBrush if you wanted to. And that's what we're going to do today. Uh, first, I need you to download a couple free things on my Gumroad. First one's going to be the Sci-Fi Cube. And it's, uh, it's about 7,400 uh, polygons. Uh, and it's separated as you can see uh, this is pretty much the same one that I did in my last video and you can go check that out to see how I built that except for the inner ring I had to redo that one redo that part to make it solid um, it does uh, have UVs as you can see here's the map right here for the UV map so you don't even have to worry about that I did all the work for you so you're also going to need this uh, Greeble 4K sample pack that I have available now. Uh, we're going to add some detail to it, separate the into mo multiple sub tools so we can bake it down to the, the lower res mesh. And then we're going to um, send it over to Marmoset, which is basically a, a game engine preview, if you want to think of it that way. It shows you what your your low uh, assets, you know, your low poly assets are going to look like in game. So it's pretty cool. And so basically, why don't we hop on over to ZBrush and we will get started. So first, we need to load up our tool. Uh, and it's the Sci-Fi Cube. And I do have, oh, let's see here. Got to go find them. There he is. It should be Sci-Fi Cube UV Low. I've got uh, Object File as well as uh, ZTL for ZBrush. I'm going to open up the ZBrush version. They're both the same except uh, you don't have to do any work with the ZBrush version. So I'm going to load him up, hit T for Edit. Uh, I'm going to go over here and change my Mac cap to gray so we can see things a little clearer. So we can turn on Polyfill. And you can see all the different polygroups in there. And I've got it separated into, uh, what is it, four? Four different uh, polygroups. So we click on him. And you can see on the inside of him. So let's go ahead and undo that. Uh, what we want to do first is real quick and easy since I got all these guys separated by their panels all we have to do is go under the sub tool do a group split yes I understand this it has to yell at me every time I do it but that's okay I'm glad the warnings there so got all of them separated now so now we can start detailing up everybody so what I want to do is actually change the UV mapping for our detailed for all our detailed sections here. So let's, uh, we'll go ahead and solo him for now. We're gonna go to surface and real fast, go to UV map and create and GUV tiles. And as you can see, it's up here as well. So I'll click on this one here. And if you guys are interested in the UI, it is available on Gumroad as well. I find it quick and easy for me to navigate instead of digging through all these panels so it, it could be a pain in the butt sometimes digging through all those panels trying to remember where everything's at so i built all this to make it easier for me 
So moving on, so we got our GUV tile set up here. So now we're going to go in and start messing with surface noise. There we go. And what you want to do uh, real quick and easy is do UV flip H. We're going to go find one of our alphas in our 4K sample pack. And I'm thinking, let me think. Let me start off with uh, number two and we're looking for the depth. It's basically your displacement slash height map. And we're gonna knock down the slope, not the strength, mixed basic noise. Uh, we're actually going to, there we go. Now we start seeing our pattern there. We can actually do a color blend of negative one. That'll darken everything up, all those panels. And if you don't like that particular pattern, you can actually scale it around, do whatever you want. We'll just find something that looks good. And before we exit out, I want to go ahead and do a copy real fast. And then click OK. And with surface noise, let me turn off polyfill here. When you look at it right now, it's just a preview of the of the displacement. It has hasn't actually done any displacement there. So let me go to Subtool real fast and turn on the poly paint. So when it renders, it'll render out the color as well. Hit BPR. So you can get a quick uh, idea of how far the displacement is going. And it looks like it's going pretty good. It's a little jaggy right there. So may have to adjust our geometry. Go into dynamic, it's all the way up, so what I'm going to do is divide it one more time and then delete lower, and then we'll see if we get a better projection there. And it's a little wonky there. So I may, probably not a whole lot I could do to fix that right now. We'll fix it here in a little bit. Uh, since this is like dead center, of the ZBrush world space, we could go ahead and do a mirror and weld on there. So we'll do modify mirror and weld on the X. Get this neat looking symmetrical effect here. And if you really wanted, you can actually do it on the Y. And there we go. That's kind of neat. I like that. And if you still want to fiddle with it a little bit more, you can go back to Surface, Edit, turn him here. And if you click on the top, and it goes red like that, and then click within the red there. Ooh, it went by too fast. Hold on. We want to grab that little one right above there. It's kind of hard to see but it'll go through it a lot slower so we can kind of nail down a feature we like. I kind of like that. Well, maybe I don't. Hold on. There we go. That's why we get some of that uh, pattern on the outside there. There we go. So we'll do a quick BPR. That's looking pretty good. So let's uh, go on to our next subtool. If you just push down, it'll go to the next available subtool. Go to turn all these on. There we go. And I'm just going to GUV on the tiles, on the UV tiles, go to surface, hit noise, and then paste, and it's already done it for us. So it's, it just copy and pasted it, so we just got to fine tune it to find something that we really like. Let's try that, okay, frame them out, do a quick test render. Nothing's final until we start doing BPR to Geo.
cool. And if you want to see more stuff about the Greebles and how to make them, I've got plenty of videos on there, but I'm not going to bore you with it. So let's go down to the next model, or the next piece. And GV real fast, noise, paste. I'm going to just leave it as is. Cool. Quick uh, test there. See how it turns out. Not too bad. Not too bad. All right, let's go to our last section there. And UVs again. Noise, paste. And let's see. Let me adjust them down to 0 0.1. Just so it's not projecting out so far. All right, not bad. We'll go back up. Edit. Point one. Edit. Point one. And edit. Okay, and we can click on solo there, so we can see what our whole model is going to look like here. Do a quick BPR, so we can see everybody together. Very cool. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's go ahead. I want to go to. I want to go ahead and load that tool again. So we have a nice clean UV version there. And we'll go back to that and do sub tools. Let's go ahead and append. Get our lower res back in there. Turn the visibility off on him. So, there we go. There he is. Now, with our low res mesh there, we've actually got to start to subdivide this guy. So, let's go ahead and do go to dynamic. Go ahead and click apply. And right now, he is at 7.5 million. I could probably divide them again. Uh, let's see what happens. The more, the yeah, 30 million. That's just going to be way too much for the computer. It's already bogging down already. And if you run into situations where your system is slowing down, you can see my free memory. Memory is like five gigs right now, and I've got 16. So start running into that problem. Go to each of your sub tools real fast, and if you go under edit, undo counter is three, you can delete that history, and that will help some of it. Just a quick tip that I do if you're not worried about, you know, going back or doing anything with it. Right now, it doesn't look like it's helping me out much at all. And delete. Okay. So I'm going to start with this guy first. And I'm going to go ahead and apply the dynamic. And he's at like 2.4 million. I actually want to divide him up one more time. There we go. So we can get a decent projection here. So convert BPR to Geo. There we go. Now it's all nice and pretty and generated. Neat little pattern on the back there. So what I want to do is project this information down to the low res, which is a pretty easy trick. So if you hit N on your keyboard, go down to your low res there. I'm going to turn a solo off here. Actually turn it on. Because I actually just want the center section. Because I just want the projection to happen on this one. Because I don't want the other ones to kind of interfere with it. So, subtool, 
well, let's go ahead and if you click that, click that, we got all the eyeballs off now. So turn solo off and let's find our little cylinder up front here. As you can see, it's slightly protruding out. And we want to go to project, which is in your sub tool here. And I want to finagle this projection shell down here to where it's just outside. There we go. And it totally covers it. So 0.025. So let me do 0.026 for the distance on the projection. So go ahead and do project all. And it's only going to do whatever is visible. So go ahead, project all. And that was just a little warning about the the poly paint not being on because it wants to try to transfer the poly paint information. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this video until it is done. It looks like it's going to be like a minute and a half, so I'm not going to make, make you wait. Okay, well, our first uh, attempt there didn't work. It got part of it. It didn't get all of it. So I am going to do switch that to outer. I think I had it on inner for for some reason it was set up on inner. So we're going to re-project again and I will well, not render it, dummy. Well, looks pretty. Okay, go ahead project all and I will be back here in a second. All right, well, that didn't work neither. Let me turn that off. Let me put him back to 0. Go ahead, 0.04, and project all again. Be right back. There we go. That's what I wanted. And the funny thing, I was messing with it earlier and had no problems messing with projection shell and all that. And oh well. <laughs> uh, we'll live and learn, I guess. I don't know. But otherwise, we have got our nice little mesh here. Are actually our low poly or what will be our low poly here pretty soon so go ahead and I want to unhide and let's do this piece here and let's go find the corresponding piece up here which would be this one here and since I have already uh, got my centerpiece there. I'm going to go ahead and delete this big guy here. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and just delete him. Delete. Always. Okay. So let's go back to this guy here. Just so I can save some memory there. Looks like I was having issues there. So, continuing on, we want to do the same procedure. I'll go through it real quick. We'll go ahead and apply. We're going to give it an extra divide on there so we can get him up to almost 10 million BPR to geo. Looking good, looking good. And you can all you can always uh, decimate this guy down if you wanted to. So just for the sake of time, I'm not gonna do that. So let's go ahead and find our low one here. Got him. And I want to open up my sub tools here. Make sure this guy is visible. There he is. So even with solo turned on, as long as that little eyeball's on, it's still going to project just fine. And I'm going to go down to, and it's still holding on to the 0 .04, so we're going to go ahead and project all. And we'll be, okay, it looks like everything went perfectly. It's nice and projected. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the high-res version here. And you can't really tell the difference. That's good. So go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and just delete him. Because just uh, for the sake of my memory. Delete. Okay. So now we're on the low one again. Unhide. Okay. 
So let's go back and start doing all our other parts here. So let's go ahead and do the bottom right corner here. And that's that guy here. And same process again, geometry, apply, divide. Ooh, he's gonna be brutal. Convert BPR to Geo here. How did he end up with so much extra? There he is. So go back to our low one here. And we're going to go ahead and turn the eyeball on and project. And be right back here in a second. All right, looking good. Projected beautifully, except for that one little piece right there. It's kind of weird. But we're just going to keep it. I'm not going to fuss over it here. Unhide. Go to this one here. If you alt and... Oops. There we go. Control shift. There we go. Got him. So let's go back to this guy here. And we'll go ahead and delete him for now. You don't have to do any deletion. You just... It's just I'm trying to manage my memory at the same time here. So let's go up to our last piece here. We're going to go ahead and same thing again. I know. Apply. Now let's try it with that subdivision. Convert BPR to Geo. Yeah. Keep that. That worked out good. A little weirdness in the corner there, but I guess that'll be okay. I can actually, if I wanted, I'm on standard brush, I could do shift, turn off RGB, turn down the intensity, and I could actually smooth that out. Yeah, I'm not going to fight with it. Alright, so back to our low eyeball on and our last projection all right did a fantastic job on projecting everything so go up to this top one and we'll just delete him off we've got everything we need all right and control shift click brings our whole model back and there he is in all his glory all the information has been sent over to each individual one. And we'll take a look inside here. Pretty cool. I like it. All right, so now let's do some ZBrush magic here. There's a nice little plug in here that's going to do everything we need. And it is called Multimap Exporter. So you'll see all the orange tabs here. These are the ones we want activated. So displacement, normal, texture from polypaint, ambient occlusion, cavity, and export mesh. We're going to do a map size of just 4096 today. You can actually take it all the way up to 8K if you wanted to. Uh, the higher the, the resolution, you know, if it's an 8K, there's going to be a lot of detail there for you. But for the sake of this tutorial and time, we're just going to do a 4K. Uh, if you click on Export Options, you can go into each individual one. Uh, this one is set up with a subdivision 6, so I'm going to drop him down to 6. Uh, you can do Adaptive, but they take forever if you do any, any Adaptive on anything. So we'll close him up. Uh, normal map, here's everything in here that we need to know. It's tangent, smooth UV, and S normals are turned on. There's another one that's adaptive we don't want to click. I think the last time I did that, it crashed ZBrush. So the ambient occlusion, I believe that's the standard setup, I think. I'm not sure if I modified it or not. And then cavity, same thing in there. 
cavity blur 10, cavity intensity 10, mesh ex export, we want to do subdivision level 1, because we only want the base mesh, uh, in quads, and export polygroups as well. Uh, make sure this little guy here is clicked, flip V, so it flips all your maps so they work correctly in other applications, because we all know ZBrush uh, its texture texture uh, coordinates are flipped on the vertical, so just kind of remember that we're all upside down in ZBrush, but we like it so much we don't care. All right, so all you gotta do is click Create All Maps. It'll ask for a destination. I'm gonna make a new folder here, and we'll just call it Cube. There we go, and file name, and save, and here comes the magic. This shouldn't take uh, too terribly long. It's going to do each of those particular maps as well as our model. Probably take us less than a minute here. It's usually about how fast it goes, especially since we didn't click on any of the adaptive. So we're about halfway there. And basically, it's taking all that high-res information and generating the normal map, the ambient occlusion, the color, everything. So obviously, this is not like a traditional Baker and other programs where you could just uh, have the low-res and you don't have to do any of this uh, subdividing and all that. But, you know, this is ZBrush. We do things a little differently here, but it is possible to do all this stuff. So everything is created less than a minute. And we can go ahead and close him up. Uh, let me see. Let me find cube. And we can check out all our maps here. And we also have the object. And let's go ahead and just open that up. And here is our ambient occlusion here. Here is your curvature. Here is your displacement map. Here is your normals. Here is your albedo diffuse colors. And that's it. So everything is ready to open up into Marmoset. So let's go in there and take a look. Let's take a look at our model in real time on a low res mesh. So I'm going to. these guys situated here as to where I can do both at the same time. So we can go ahead and do this OBJ file and we can just drag and drop right into here. I'm going to put just the default on there so we can see them a little better. Hold down Alt. You can click and move them around. Now here's the situation here. We have this cube and but it's still fauceted. So it still looks, you know, pixelated or what have you. And that's the problem when it exports out OBJ files and ZBrush. It doesn't have any smoothing information for your uh, base mesh, for your low res. So I found a little trick that you can do. I don't know if there's a way to do it as an OBJ file, but there is a way to do it as... Let me lower him all the way down. One. Let me go ahead and just so I don't lose him, I'm going to clone. Okay. And I'm going to go to another plugin inside ZBrush, and it's the FBX export import. So we can do selected subtools. Uh, it's going to be a binary format, layers, and that S normals is what we're looking at. And that's going to help us out. So go ahead and click export, cube, and let's go, okay. Delete that. And file has been exported. So close him up. 
there he is FBX file let's go ahead and delete that one drop him in boom look at that and it even made materials for all all the areas there so you can manipulate it even more but we're gonna keep it all the same material so we'll just drag and drop on the top of the group there and so let's start building everything here zoom out just a little we'll do our normal map just drag and drop look at there isn't that nice okay um, losing track here so let's do this diffuse here and drop it in albedo let's get a different sky in here this is just I feel like I'm on the frigid north or something let's see yeah that works okay all right, and I'm also going to change it to blurred sky. There we go. Zoom in just a touch there. Let's continue adding our stuff here. Uh, we want to get occlusion. Occlusion. Pull him down. And let's drop our ambient occlusion onto the occlusion. And then drop our curvature cavity maps onto there adds even more to it looking good now we can also add a, dis a displacement or a height I'm gonna turn the scale all the way down and let's find this one here this is our displacement DM displacement map drop him in okay don't see anything yet but that's alright and it looks like I have got everything I need shift move the light around look at that isn't that nice nice little low poly in game cool all right let me open him all the way so we're gonna take a look around here looks pretty darn cool so now we got that sub or that displacement but we also need some subdivision to help us out so we'll just do flat I'm gonna raise the tessellation up to about a thousand ish and then now we can mess with our displacement and we can bring it out just a little bit just enough to add some more depth look at that isn't that beautiful now the surface is uh, it's all uniform it's all you know it's all plastic shiny so unfortunately there's no way for ZBrush to actually make that but you could but it it just won't work the same way so what I do is I actually go to like textures.com and you can get a free account there and for me I get 15 credits a day and then I go into grunge load up grunge maps all these different little grunge maps that we can use and you kind of want more something like that where it's a little faded so I've got a couple already so let me pull them up here we go find my page again okay there we go so now we can just drop that into the gloss so let's try him out see how he looks nice adds a lot to it a little difference in everything I like it all right we'll just stick with that one we can go up to render turn on local reflections ambient occlusion Occlusion strength, bump him up. There we go, that'll work. High res shadows, enable GI. Ooh, look at that. Looky there, isn't that cool? Okay, go ahead and we can mess with the lighting. 
So if you just click anywhere on this picture, it'll add a light. And then you can drag it around, see what kind of effect you get. Click and drag. Just so we can add some more. Nice. I need some more tessellation on uh, tessellation not gonna help as much. And if you want it, you can click on this little guy here. Actually we've got to open that up. If I'm material that's it. Turn that eyeball off. There we go. Now we can look inside our model. Pretty cool. Now you can just go ahead and do a capture. I'm just going to do image and open. See how this looks. Renders it out real fast. Very cool. And delete. Yeah. And you can even set up a turntable. Oops. Nope. Nope. Make sure you're selected on the whole group. And then turntable. And then all you got to do, I'm going to sync loop settings. And there we go. Looky there. Very cool. So yeah, it's uh, not too painful of a process. It just depends on how many uh, subtools you got going on, on in ZBrush. Um, but you can bake all your information to a low poly. Uh, model and send it off to a game engine just like we did here with Marmoset so it would basically uh, do the same thing in the Unre Unreal Engine and uh, Frostbite and it would all work the same they all work pretty much off of PBR so they each have their own little quirk or their own little ways of doing it but that's yeah there's the basis to get you going i hope this helps some people out there um, if you got any more questions or uh, some ideas or something let me know and i'll be happy to put a video together for you and we will see you in the next video you guys have a great day